<clears throat> well, it's uh, 6.30 on day four, and I hope the sound is coming in because it's pouring rain. You can hear it on the tent, and it's been raining since 10 o'clock when we went to bed last night. Maybe a little bit of a reprieve in the night, but for the most part, rain, rain, rain. So all our gear is packed. Uh, sorry, all our, all our uh, sleeping bags and everything are rolled up. We're just kind of waiting for the rain to die down, and we're going to quickly pack up and head out. Lots of canoeing ahead of us today. Uh, we were hoping for some sunny weather so we could dry our stuff from yesterday. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. But uh, regardless, it's going to be straight paddling with uh, rain gear on and uh, fingers crossed for some nicer weather. And then uh, portaging later on today, just some smaller ones, nothing like yesterday. And then um, maybe an earlier stop tonight. That's hopefully. our hope. Hopefully. That's our hope. Could be late afternoon, early evening. We'll see how things go. It's around eight o'clock, and uh, we're on the water. And as you can see, Mother Nature has decided to get us all nice and soaking wet. So, could be a day of paddling through the rain. Hope not. All right, it's uh, about quarter to eleven. It finally stopped raining. We probably paddled in the rain for maybe a good hour. And it stopped raining. But it's still really cloudy. And when that sun's out, it's nice. But when she pokes behind the clouds, which is most of the time, it gets quite cold. So, I got my, uh, my pop on just to keep me warm. Pulled over because Rich needs to uh, take care of some business. But, uh... Luckily, we're making some pretty good time so far, um, and probably in another hour or so we'll go over and have some lunch. But beautiful Lake Conipi. Well, we knew it was high water coming in, but I mean, this is usually land right here. Those are all underwater. You can see those trees ahead of us. Those are all underwater. There might actually be a, this might actually be all one point that is completely underwater that we're going to be canoeing over. You can see even on the side there how the water is just moving, just cooking all around here. The water is incredibly, incredibly high. Much higher than it has been for the first half of this trip, that's for sure. Okay, so it's hard to see, but you can probably notice something moving in the water there. That's actually the head of a moose. We just pulled off so that uh, well, nature call nature was calling for Sean, but uh, I poked my head up and I just saw something moving in the water. I think it's just beyond those trees now. Yeah, there it is. I was zoomed in as far as I can go. Anyway, just looks like a moose. He's moving along. We need to see if he gets out on that shore there. It's hard to see, but he's moving between the trees, uh, like the flooded trees, right on the edge of the shore. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Okay, we're going to have a look at some rapids right now. Um, normally this is just like a little trickle or a swift, but because the water is so high, it might be a little bit more. So we're going to go take a little peek at them. I don't even know where the portage would be if we did have to go around it, though. Sure, let hope it's not this. Anyway, the rapids are just on the other side, so we're gonna go have a look. Like there's an easy, there's a line, there's a direct line. As long as you go that way, just avoid that hole. Yeah. Like we don't have to do any technical turns or anything. Hit it straight, and then just keep going. We want to keep going that way, yeah. 
Yeah, because if we wanted to turn around, it would be a little tricky. Yeah. But I feel like as long as we're just going straight, we, as long as we go straight, we stay like kind of right in the center, we should be fine. beats a four kilometer portage. <laughs> Looks like we had something ahead of us too. I think this is probably something like similar. It's just very like that are, yeah, swift. Strong, swift yeah. Just have to do swift with a 18 foot canoe, but we managed. I know exactly what you mean. I saw that as we passed it. Whoa! Woo! So we stopped and had lunch at these rapids, um, and we're in a bit of a pickle. The portage for these rapids to go around them is usually on the other side, but the landing to dock to portage around them is flooded, and it's not safe to go. So instead we're doing it on this side, which was fine to walk around the, the rapids, only that we really don't have a great spot to put the canoe in. So this is the best spot. Everything else up there is um, a cliff. So we're gonna put our canoe in here. You can see that there's still quite a bit of current and uh, hopefully we can get it in. Rich is gonna go inside the canoe. I'm gonna pass him the things. We're gonna load it up and just go and hopefully the current doesn't take the canoe away. Okay, hold on a sec. Okay. Yeah. I know. Okay, I'm gonna lift up. Okay. Just straight up. Okay. And then what? Oh, can you move it down? Yeah, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, okay I got it. Okay. Let's do this, because I want to be able to make sure I get in. Okay, so we are on portage into Keats Lake. Long story short, there's two ways into Keats Lake. We took another, we tried to go another way first and uh, the waterfalls were so strong 
that they've pretty much wiped out the landing on the other side of the portage so we had no nowhere to put our canoe in in fact if you're putting your canoe in you're putting it right into the strong rapids which is suicidal so got back in the canoe canoed around the island and came to this portage which is actually really nicely maintained a little bit of a hiccup we went to the wrong landing but long story short we're at the right one now and uh I'm portaging the rest of the gear. Sean's got the canoe up ahead. And uh, in a second here, I will show you the falls. You can hear them, They're, they are tremendously loud. And the amount of water in Keats Lake, just from what we saw at the landing already, at the other side, is unbelievable. Like, essentially all the shorelines are gone. Forests are inundated with water. Everything's flooded. Uh, thankfully, we're not spending the night here, going on to the next lake, but we're hoping that at least those uh, um, campsites are higher up, higher elevation. Every once in a while, you just see these absolutely ginormous white spruce trees, just massive. You can see all their fallen branches here as well. I think from a recent windstorm, they all look fairly fresh. Okay, these are the falls we just portaged around. Um, just absolutely massive. Around the bend there to the left is another big set. And then you can just see the flowing water just right into Keats Lake. And this is the portage trail that'll take us to the ending there. But just a tremendous amount of water, like, never seen anything like this. Okay, here's the end of the portage. See, Sean's already got the canoe in. It's great. It wasn't actually that bad once we found the trail. Once we found the trail, yeah, I told him about that. Um, Okay, so this is the water that I was just showing you coming down those falls into Keats Lake. It's going to be hard to capture on camera, but you can see shoreline, I don't know, maybe 100 yards from us where the trees are just surrounded by water. They shouldn't be. Um, and I'm guessing there's a lot of other points there too. But just a huge amount of energy coming out of this waterfall, which we got to canoe into the tail end of. There are some waterfalls over there some beautiful rapids over there and this is all the view from our campsite the reason we decided to stop and camp here is because if you look around this lake you can tell it is you may not be able to tell on camera but it is flooded the shores are flooded the water was incredibly high we knew that but there was a point over there is supposed to be a campsite but instead it's completely underwater we were looking at our map and there was two other campsites that were kind of in the, the vicinity that we we're going to try to push to one was on the right before another waterfall one was right after um, but judging by the topography um, it looked like they were probably going to be flooded and so as much as we wanted to push it because we are a little bit behind if we would have gotten in those two campsites would be underwater like that one, uh, we'd be going well into the night. So instead we found this really nice campsite here and it's on an island and it's nice and high, which is the reason why we picked this one. It's, it's, it's very high, we, we checked it out, we figured best bet would be to stop here and, um, and camp and so that's what we're gonna do. And then tomorrow we're gonna wake up early because we are still behind I promised my wife I'd be home on Wednesday. I'm trying really hard, honey. Um, we're just backed up and we're doing our best. So anyway, very nice campsite, very nice view.